Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on this July the 8th. It's hard to believe. Golly, the 4th of July was like forever. I think it was 4th of July for five days, wasn't it, Bill Cooksey? <laughs> I guess it seemed that way if you were off the whole time. Well, it got rained out of our fireworks, and then right. then everybody in the neighborhood shot fireworks instead. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. All night long. All night long. They were, I, they I, were shooting them halfway through the week at my house. Yeah, still going Wednesday on. Wednesday night they yeah, were shooting all fireworks. the rain. Does. So uh, we got a guy on the line with us right now that knows a lot about it. Here he comes. He's got his own theme song. Look at him move. Oh, Steve, you slow down. You used to be able to do that real fast. Okay. Look at that. Steve Mac Adams. Hey, Good like, morning. All right. You got your own theme song, buddy. Smoke on the water. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, hot fishes, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to, we don't want to cut into any of your money time here or anything, but uh, we just talked to Gary Harlan about what's going on in Pickwick down south. So we want to get to Steve up, up north, as we told everybody, but not, not Alaska, but Steve McAdams. 40 years as a guide. Now, somebody, I mentioned that to somebody else and said, and he's still living? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell well, us. Well, that's just that good quality time outdoors. It keeps you, maintain your use. See? Well, we'd li- I'd like to, some folks that ask me, uh, they'd like to be a guide. And I tell them, call Steve McAdams. Uh, that's because right. This I, is, this I can... is, you can really, so t- tell our listeners <laughs> before we get into the real fishing, and then Ron starts asking you colors and names of lures, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Tell us about how you got into this, because I think a lot of people would be uh, would like to hear this. Well, I you know I didn't really start out to do it full time, and I was going to college. And my first year in college, I started guiding part time because I always fished and hunted in my family. So uh huh. I was to fish older people, and uh, I, I got a degree in biology. I thought I wanted to be a wildlife officer, but I started guiding part time and just liking the people and. I don't know. I just I look around and 38 years went by there somewhere. I just, uh, <laughs> just like uh, that. You know, it's been a good career. It's been very nice to me, but it's, uh, it's a lot tougher than, than me. Uh, really. All right. So what's the tough part? Well, fighting the weather. You know, Mother Nature, you, she deals with cars. You know, some days the wind beats you up. The weather, the hot, the cold, the rain, all the above. But uh, she deals all the cards. And some days the ducks don't fly and the fish don't bite. you got to just suck it up and go and do your best anyway. So. Nothing, it's never easy, I guess, no job's easy all the time, but uh, the good outnumbers are bad. It's been very nice to me. And, and, and again, the, the folks, you heard him right. Uh, not only does he, is, is he a fishing guide, but he's a, a, a well-known waterfowl Absolutely. guide. And a lot of people say, well, how can you do them both? Well, <laughs> during the winter, it just gets a little too cold to fish. So <laughs> December and January, I love fighting the, fighting the waterfowl. George waterfowl hunting and got Labrador and that's the way of life too. And I, I just enjoy waterfowl during the winter months. It's a good break and get away. And I wouldn't want to hunt all year long. I wouldn't want to fish all year long. So it's a nice change. So it's a big exchange. So what's how many days a year do you uh, are you on the water, either duck hunting or fishing? I backed off a little bit in the last few years, but I used to be, I think, you know, well over. You know, around 250 days, 225, 250 yeah. days back in times past. And I, I don't do that much anymore, but for many years I did. And, uh, but I'm learning now to back off just a little bit. So uh, time, time has taken its toll. Well, now I know that uh, uh, i got to ask you, how old are you? 63. 63. So I started when I was 19 or 20. You know, uh, <laughs> well, he did. He did, and you're a cancer survivor. A lot of people don't realize that, too. And you've, you've been a great spokesman. Uh, for. So tell us about that. Well, I, I'm very blessed. I got past cancer, thank goodness. And started during my, as soon as I got through taking that chemotherapy, I thought, well, I'll do something to help somebody. And one of the things we did was rejuvenate a fishing radio. Yeah. In Terrell County, where I'm from, in McKenzie. And so we started a casting for a cure. Kids fishing when 18 years ago, we started that thing, and boy, it's been great for kids. And, uh, we've taught a lot of people to fish, and we've fought fish and fought cancer at the same time. So it's, hey. it's been a labor of love for sure. Steve, uh, you know, we've talked about the past. 
But I think everybody wants to know right now, if I was to go crappie fishing today, <laughs> what would I be doing? There he goes. He's ready. Well, we're, we're in a typical summer patterns up here. 12 to 14 feet is where a lot of the mid-range fish are kind of parking right now. And uh, it's pretty good, tipping the jig with a minnow or tipping it with a little Berkeley power bait. We're vertical fishing over stake beds and brush piles and what we call mid-range depths. And it's been pretty good. We're not catching as many big fish as we'd like to be seeing. But uh, we're catching enough to get us by. And, uh, we- bass fishing has been great. We've had some good fishing lately. The ledges are starting to produce even more. We've got a little current going on now. Right. EVA starts drawing the lake, uh, Kentucky Lake down each year on the 1st of July. Our ships are right after the 4th of July. They start the winter drawdown. Uh, which is normal. We're going to start putting the reservoir down slowly. And that puts a little current out there. And when that happens, the current stimulates bait fish activity and the whole food chain seems to respond positively to that. So the bass fishing, fishing the big crankbaits and big nine and ten inch worms and pig and pig and all the other big open water baits, it's improved that bite. Well, Bill was asking about the the grass. I want to know about the grass, man. That's, uh, yeah. Is there well, any grass up there? Well, a lot of other people the same way. Our aquatic vegetation started in 89 and 1990 in Kentucky Lake. It came on strong for decades. The last two years, it has gone. We do not have Eurasian watermelon soil or the hydrogen or pond weed. And, yeah. Uh, spiny leaf knee and several aquatic vegetations were out there. And that was a blessing in disguise for bass fishing, especially. That was good at fishing, too. Yeah. But uh, the grass, for some unknown reason, I don't know. We've had some high water a couple of years, and no doubt that does get back some. But, you know, places like Gunnersville to our south, pick we still got a little bit, baby. Mm hmm. Uh, well, there you go. There's some aquatic vegetation there. Why we haven't rebounded on Kentucky Lake is uh, somewhat of a mystery. I wish I could answer the question. Well, Bill, can you answer it? Well, I, we did have a lot of hot water late this year. Yes. And uh-huh. I, I knew that was hurting them up north. And yeah. It, it's messed us up down south where I fish, too. Uh, I just heard a few rumors there's a little bit of grass in spots a few weeks ago. So. Probably back in a little bit in the creeks. I think you can go in Panther Creek a little bit. But, you know, you talk about the high water when it was high, very high. It was ex- the current in the lake was tremendous. I I can remember being out there in April, late April, and fishing those islands right around the Danville Bridge. And there was current going through those islands like mm-hmm. you wouldn't believe. You had to power pole down to fish a stump. And... Uh, Hmm. That's going to wipe out a lot of that grass, yeah. too. Dingy and water. That's what's and, happened, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, Steve, I know that you've had to deal with all sorts of situations as a career and uh, as a guide, and I know uh, you've got a lot of repeat customers. Uh, you got some folks probably come from Wisconsin, I guess up north, to come down to fish with you, right? Well, we do. We get people from all over. Kentucky likes to mix it off, people across the nation. But we get a lot of Northern state, they did. I just had someone from Wisconsin last week, as a matter of fact. But we did a lot of Illinois, Missouri, Indiana, Ohio, Angler. But all across west and middle Tennessee as well. We, we put a lot of people from the Memphis area, of course, and Nashville area, too, that enjoy coming here. But we do. It's a destination for a lot of anglers across the country. They don't touch the size or the quantity of crappie up north or the bass that we do here. So we're very fortunate to have the fishery we got here. And, and all you got to do to appreciate it is to ask somebody from another state or another place, and they'll tell you right quick, they don't have the fishing that we do. And you've also got, uh, as the waterfowl guide, folks, uh, I can't let Steve go uh, 40 years doing this, but uh, uh, I've had the privilege of being in the boat with him. I've had the privilege of uh, being in a blind with him. The the waterfowl and Bill's looking at this, and uh, I know we're getting ready to go to, Ron's going to be going to ICAST, Bill's going to ICAST, mm-hmm. and I've been to ICAST, and uh Let's talk about waterfowl for just a second here. Uh, they've already set the seasons. We don't have to r- raggle around, you know. That's right. I, I, yeah, that's nice. It's nice to know we've got a 60-day season coming every year now. And pretty much you know it's going to open up pretty similar to last year. Bag limits will be summer. Weekend after Thanksgiving, most likely. And uh, six duck limit, as we've had last year. We'll wait to see maybe a specific zone of species update here pretty soon and in the next week or two. But uh, things look pretty good. I know you did. Down south, but you know it's too warm. But winters will come and go. Things will change on the weather. But uh, last year was the warmest winter I've ever had. Yeah, it was, and I, a lot of us uh, 
said we're still we're not even in the thermal underwear like stuff at right. some of those times. I mean, you know? were fishing. Fishing was great all winter last year, and I never I've never seen that many people bass and trucker fishing in December and January. It was, just, it was crazy. Yeah, and 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 so as a waterfowler, uh, uh, folks, you know when you when you book a trip, and we're going to get that from Steve. Uh, uh, this is he doesn't have certain dates that you expect the birds to be there. Yeah. <laughs> if I you, wish I could figure that out. I'm asked a million times a year, you know, when is the best time to come? That's yeah. what everybody asks, you know, about fishing or hunting. Yeah. But you can't have guess the weather. You can't predict Mother Nature. And I think the best, best time to go is when you can. And just, yeah. uh, that's the only control you've got is being there. The rest of it is Mother Nature and the other. A lot of other sites, there's a little bit of luck in there, too. But I would encourage people to plan ahead and go when you can and hope for the best. That's, that's really all you can Go do. when you can. can. Yeah, go you when you can. short notice, but. Most time you can't have guess the weather. Well, no, and they call you and say, uh, Steve, I want to go December the 28th. Uh, will the ducks be there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Six months in advance. So that's a tough question to answer. But six months in advance. You can't do that and everything. All I can tell them is my Labrador and I will be there, and I hope you are too. Well, yeah, buddy. Now, so uh, tell our listeners how they get in touch with you. And, uh, folks, this is the. Go ahead and start booking those waterfowl hunts, right, Steve? Because uh, absolutely, it, it'll yeah, be we're, here before. We're a, lot of, a lot of fall fishing and winter pasture fishing, but then reach my website is stevemcadams.com. And and we've got that on lroutdoors.com along with Steve's wonderful fishing report, which uh, good it, stuff, good mm-hmm. stuff. You know, I mean, fishing reports are not easy. I used to do them for all those years of commercial appeal, right? You know, and they're, they're putting those things together were. And if you left them out one week, they're after you. Absolutely. And so go to go to Steve's website. Go to lroutdoors.com. Steve, thank you, buddy, uh, for your friendship. I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, last Sunday I celebrated my 50th anniversary of being in Memphis and writing. And oh, well, congratulations! Wow, can you believe? <laughs> can you believe that, Steve? Do you? I can't. I can't believe we've been around this long. I know it, and we've got a lot of memories. Some of them we can't talk about. Okay, so we, let's. We do, but it, all right, that's great, though. All that's right, but, to you, Larry. all right, thank you. All right, let's take a break on outdoors, with Larry Ray, and we'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Wong as we talk loose. <laughs> I know he loves that, and Bill cooks. He's got to step out. Bill, we appreciate you coming Thank by you. and being with us it. for this time. You but, step uh, out, yeah, you? he's got a conference this morning, and uh, he he that's has he does work. Call. You know, he does. He's yeah. not retired, Ron. He does have. Wait a minute, I'm not retired anymore. <laughs> Am I? I'm not retired either. So, but Bill, thank you, buddy. Thank y'all. Enjoyed it. Okay, and you will you watch uh, Wong down there at ICAST? Absolutely, I'll keep an eye on. Uh, I'll right. keep an eye on Bill. Yeah, don't let him go out to uh, Disney World too many times. You know. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back on Outdoors, Larry Ray. You can find. Out. 